They were also led in many ways by women, which was not the normal thing back in those days, okay? We've heard about Mother Jones, but the Women's Auxiliary played a dramatic role in the, in the direction that that union took and the way it acted and the way it interacted with the community. Hello, I'm Joanne Condalone. I'm on the board of the Mother Jones Museum Mount Olive and a member of the Union Miners Cemetery Perpetual Care Committee. It's my privilege to talk to you today about the women of the Progressive Miners of America's Auxiliary, who they were, what they did, their legacy, and our responsibilities to them. I'm going to tell you uh, a little bit of that story, and then Anna Pamphetti Ecker is going to follow me and tell you her personal family story, because her grandmother was in this auxiliary, White City. So who were they? They were the daughters, wives, mothers of coal miners who shared the hard work, the dangerous working conditions that led to the death and injuries of miners. Who shared the poor medical care, terrible housing and poverty that life in the mines brought with it. They knew what it was like to search for food for hungry families during strikes. They sat with the men in the union halls and join the talks of strategies and solutions. They were the midwives and nurses, boarding housemaids, gardeners and farmers in their communities. Few of them earned wages. Many were new or first or second generation Americans. Many of them were bilingual, sometimes trilingual, literate in their home language and in English. A few, like their most famous leader, Agnes Burns Wick, who became the leader of the Progressives at this very site in 1932. Agnes had a college education, the first coal miner's daughter in Southern Illinois to go to Southern Illinois Normal School to get a teacher's education, and then had a scholarship to study labor history in Chicago. Most, like Agnes's right-hand organizer, Katie DeRory, who was an immigrant from Northern Italy and knew hunger as a child, most of them, like Katie, had some high school education and learned the values and the ideas of democracy in the Union Hall and in their communities. And, and indeed, the formation of progressives came after the march down in Mulkytown, where they were led into an ambush. When the striking miners of central Illinois rode to Mulkey Town to protest their stolen union vote, the women, the daughters, the mothers, the grandmothers, the sisters rode along with them in those cars. They too were driven off the road, injured, terrified, shot at, denied medical care, and radicalized by the experience. They marched with their men, 15,000 strong, to commemorate the Battle of Verdun and the dead buried in Mount Olive on October 12, 1932, before the auxiliary was even formed. They marched in, partner in partnership with common purpose to remember the dead, to fight for a just union, and to celebrate Mother Jones. They loved her and acted in the spirit of her work. I've heard enough, I've heard enough. I've got something to say here, and I want you to listen up. If those boys down buried in the coal mines could rise up today, rise up and march with us, they'd have plenty to say. And they wouldn't be afraid. Oh, they wouldn't be afraid. But I'm here to tell you, be brave. I don't want you to be afraid. We're peaceful protesters. Peaceful protesters. But even peaceful protesters get arrested. Don't be afraid. I'll be right there with you. We're going to march. We're going to march for better wages. Justice. Can't be afraid. And you're going to have to have cool heads. Because when they take you off to jail, you're going to want to get upset and lash out, but you can't. Because 
Laborers are the ones that built the jails. They don't mind cooling their heels there. Doesn't matter what race, creed, or political banner you stand under. We're all laborers, and we're in this together. We have to keep fighting. You know there's only two classes of people. Two classes. Those that create the wealth and those that steal it. We're not putting up with any of our bosses' dirty shenanigans. Let me tell you something, boys. Those fellas that built the washing machines, they had it right. Down in the very heart of the washing machine, what did they do? They put an agitator. That's what we need, a strong agitator to stir things up and whip those dirty bosses and clean up this mess. They tell you, they tell you, you're not a lady if you're marked. Well, it's your bosses that's telling you you're not a lady. We don't want ladies. We want women, strong women to march with us. They're the ones that know how to clean up messes, am I right? Women can clean up messes. You should have been with me there in West Virginia when I had that bunch of mountain women and we marched into the coal mines with our mops and our brooms. The men were afraid to go and we went down into the coal mines and we chased those scabs out of there. We whipped every one of them. Listen to mother. Listen, you get down on your knees at night before your pallet and you say, Oh, dear Lord, please send us better days. I have so many bills. Oh, please help me. I tell you to pray for the dead, but fight like hell for the living. Yeah. I may not reach heaven, but at least I raise a little hell. May the spirit of Mother Jones always be with us. As the miners developed their union, the women developed their auxiliary, their own democratic organization, leadership, and constitution. On November 2nd, 1932, a two-day meeting of 157 delegates from 38 auxiliaries, a total of 5,000 members, met to form the women's auxiliary right here. Here are some of what their constitution says in the preamble. These are the women, remember when you hear these words, who were considered ignorant, illiterate immigrants. Because of the misery inflicted upon our families as a result of the intolerable conditions in the, in the coal industry, we, the women of the coal fields of Illinois, have organized ourselves as a militant ally of our men's union in the struggle for existence. As the women's auxiliary of the progressive miners, we shall do everything possible to strengthen our men's union, to help preserve their hard-won liberties of the past, and to help them secure a fuller measure of justice as workers. For our men, we want nothing less than the full social value of their labor. For our children, the fullest opportunities for education and happiness. For ourselves, the right to join with our men in the labor movement toward the end that labor shall build a better world for all the children of mankind. Agnes Burns Wick became the first president and led the women on marches, 10,000 strong, to Springfield to petition the government for unemployment insurance and fair distribution of aid. Katie DeRory, who came to be called the Good Samaritan of the Coal Fields, set up soup kitchens that welcomed everyone, children of black and white miners, progressives and united alike to eat together. Katie held education sessions in her parlor for the first time, black and white miners' wives and daughters socialized together, strategized together. The auxiliary wrote articles, fed and nursed and offered aid to their communities, lobbied governments, spoke to churches and community groups, all to make their common cause to defend a new union and its democratic ideas. And so they came together and they formed a union on that spot. 
but ultimately the forces that they rebelled against, you know, made it less likely that they could succeed in the long run. They stood up for what they believed in. We know the progressives failed in their attempt to counter the United Mine Workers of America and to get government support for their cause. By 1999, they ceased to exist. So what is the legacy of the progressive miners and the women's auxiliary? Why are they important? They are important as a vital piece of labor history and all history in America of struggles for representation in the Union Hall for safer working conditions, for justice for working people. That piece of history, which continues to affect all of our lives, all of labor history, happened here on this place, in this small town, in the prairie, and in the communities around us, right here in our place. They were good stewards of the United Mine Workers. Because of them, we have the Mother Jones Monument today, and they tended lovingly to the Union Miners Cemetery. What are our responsibilities to the PMA and the Women's Auxiliary? It is our turn to be good ancestors, to protect the values and ideas they cherished with our own actions, to honor them with events such as this one. We must tell their stories illuminate their lives in our schools and museums. Remember their courage. At the dedication of the Katie DeRory Stone in Collinsville, Jerry Ellard, a great pillar of the progressives, said these words, a union as a nation honors its warriors, but it is those who heal who are its conscience. Thank you and remember solidarity forever. I'm extremely proud to be here today to help celebrate and honor the brave women who were members of the Women's Auxiliary of the Progressive Miners. Having raised our family in Mount Olive, we always knew the significance of Mother Jones and what she fought for. We have always taken great pride in the fact that she requested her final resting place be in the Union Miners Cemetery in Mount Olive with her boys. Gillespie, Mount Olive, and so many of our surrounding towns share this strong coal mining and union history. I recently had the opportunity to learn more about the Women's Auxiliary of the Progressive Miners. I discovered that my grandmother, Mary Mahelsik of White City, had been a member of the Women's Auxiliary. I found two pictures of the auxiliary dated 1946, one with my grandmother and all of the members paying tribute to Idris Maybe at his gravesite, and one with all the women at a meeting hall. Beautiful pictures that offer a glimpse into the powerful history of these courageous women. Many of us in this area had mothers and grandmothers who were a part of the Women's Auxiliary. Sharing their stories is one way to honor them and keep the spirit of what they stood for alive. They were the real backbone of the movement. We owe them a debt that can never be repaid. Thank you, strong women, for having the courage to become the militant ally of our men.